Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Beanley Arena. Today is Saturday, the 25th of September. My name is John DeMacaulay, and it's an honour and a pleasure to be your MC for this evening. On behalf of Paul DeMacaulay and all the team at Prophecy Promotions, we welcome you here this evening to eruption number eight, the clash of the Gold Coast Titans. Nine bouts of Muay Thai on the card this evening. And they're all coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, our final three fights on the card are all worthy of main event status. They are going to be huge. We have from Thailand, now residing in Australia, last with year's the, runner uh, of the, the Eruption Super 8, Sin Suri, fighting awesome. Mark Matrix Jim Steady. And then our semi-main event from Thailand, Yud Ruai versus Benaya Duma. And ladies and gentlemen, our main event, the clash of the Gold Coast Titans, Grant the Bomber Millwood will take on Thor, the God of Thunder, Hoopman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one night of Muay Thai you do not want to miss. Let's get the show on the road. It's showtime. Fight number one of the evening, Nux Havili versus the Iranian tank, Masood. Go with the punches, I'm up around block. It's like another dragon, I'm born this way. So I keep my pants sagging into the dragon and watch me rise. I don't want to those boots that don't close your eyes. Don't want the recognition, I just want the cross. Roll the blood, sweat, tears that got me by. Like that. down the top rope to make it easy to get, get all that man into the ring. A lot of the Islander boys have a big punch on them. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, Prophecy Promotions welcomes you to eruption number eight and the opening bout of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by Fight World. It'll be fought under modified tie rules. Knees, no elbows, 116 kilogram weight division, three by two minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Brian Murphy. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Richard Walsh at Urban Fight Gym. He weighed in at 117 kilograms and he hails from Avondale. He's wearing black shorts with Urban emblazoned across the front. Ladies and gentlemen, Nuts Harvilly. And his opponent fighting out of the rink on the train by Nugget at Nugget's Thai Gym. He weighed in at 118 kilograms. He hails from Brisbane, originally from Iran, wearing white evolution shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd favourite, he is the Iranian tank, Ma Soon. <laughs> Fighters to centre ring. Okay, boys, this is modified tight, so there is no elbows in this. Okay, what I want is a good, clean fight. Okay, defend yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Cut stubs, come out fighting. And there's the bell. There's the bell. Oh, Masood very early. He puts out the right hand, up with the big left leg kick. Nux lands the right leg, both boys. A little nervous, we're going to find their range. With Masood does with a jab. Up at that left leg. Time is it going. Nux's chin's looking pretty high, but he's keen to get in there. Oh, lands that right leg again, and back he goes. Catches Masood with the right. Masood counters with his own left leg. Big hands, big hands. Still looking to find his range, which he's doing successfully, but Nux is angry. Slow, slow but a short start from Masood. Oh, and a big back spinning kick from Masood. Beautiful. You don't expect to see that from a man that big. Nux goes after him. Liberal application of the leather. And they slow down. Oh, catch the leg again with that kick. Nux ducks under. Nux ducks under. Right round kick lands. Jab. Right hand on the chin. Catches him with the kick. But Masood dumps. Dumps Nux successfully. 
Knox is back up. Knox is back up. High guard. Masood's looking relaxed. In with that left inside kick. Out with the right. Knox finds him with the hands. Oh, with that kick again. He's going to have to start pulling that right leg back. Spinning back fist. Finds the gloves, but not the chin. Knox is in. Knox is hunting for the big punch. Settles for the right leg. Finds him with a cross. He's getting a bit sloppy. Knox is busy. Looks a little dazed as he steps back. But Murph doesn't seem to need to make an issue of it with an eight count. Oh, push kick from Masood. Big overhand right. Counter with the left hook to the chin. And the end of the bell sings the end of the first round. What do you think, Lucy? Yeah, that was a good first round for both super heavyweight fighters. Good first round for two such inexperienced fighters. That's right. I like, I like the sort of uh, techniques. Yeah, he's a much better kicker than he is uh, Bill Brown Jets. And round two begins with the inside thigh kick from Masood. Nux counters, checked up, oh, push kick from Masood. So it's definitely starting to find, find his feet in this fight. But Nux is not to be put off. Oh, there's low kick, trading low kicks. Big circular punches from both boys. A lot of power in those 116 kilo frames. Oh, Nux has caught him. Caught him with the right hook. But not enough. Oh, just misses with the left. Just misses with the left, switches up for the left kick. Low right round. Turns him off. Oh, there was a very open chin looking for Nux's right hand there, but the opportunities missed him. Oh, Nux goes to throw the big right hand. Masood evades. Oh, there's a bit of Peter Graham's rolling thunder. A bit of Peter Graham's rolling thunder there. Action resumes. Come on, Nux, beat him to the punch. That's what I'm thinking, Lucy. I'm thinking he needs to beat Masood to the punch. Masood likes that big right hand. They're not quick hands on Masood. Oh, oh, oh. Masood wades in. Nux catches him. Masood makes his way back. Richard Walsh giving the instructions. Oh, there's that rolling thunder. It's going to tire him out, Lucy. He's going to have to lay off that sort of technique. It's going to wear him out prematurely. Oh, Nux rushes in, covers up, tries to find him with the knee, fails. Masood's, Masood's push kick is reliable. Oh, overhand right. Hey! And Nux catches him on the chip with the right. Oh, shows him his back. Oh, there's that spinning back fist, but Nux is wise. Catches him with the jab. Masood looking for the uppercut. Hands are looking very down. Time for a high kick from Nux, I'm thinking, but he's going to settle for the left hook. Masood's breathing heavily at the end of the second round. And I'm starting to think that if Nux pulls on the pressure, he might be able to take this home. Got a scars on that man, Lucy. That's a very nasty scar on that right leg. And such gloves. Away they go. Nux starts off with the right. Oh! Masood counters with a solid right hand. And another, and another. But Nux is not to be put off. He's after him like a ball. Oh, and he catches Masood with the left jab. Oh, it's hand over hand now. They've decided to descend into a brawl, Lucy. Oh, both boys connect with a right round kick. Nux tries again. I believe Nux has got a Taekwondo background. Oh, big kick off the front leg there from Masood. Both of them seem to have got Nux's attention. Going for the overhand right. Nux moves out of the corner. Tries to counter with the left. That's it, uh, that's it. Nux comes in with the right. Masood counters with the left. Couple of kicks. It's a good, good fighter's vocabulary on both men here. Both good with the high kicks. Masood's shown a range of techniques. Not always, about, not always effective, but that big right round kick looks like it might be. And the big left and the big right. Nux comes out, hands firing. Masood's hands are very low. If Nux has got the energy, he needs to step in now. He needs to step in and punch. Both boys are starting to really feel the pressure, but it looks like Masood's more committed at this point. Nux is covering up, oh, but he comes back and catches Masood twice on the chin. Masood wades in, couple of punches, high kick. Nux counters with the hand, the face is down. Masood pulls him into a knee, but to no avail. 30 seconds remaining. Last 30, 30, 30 seconds, seconds of this round as Masood goes for the high kick, fighting in with the hands. Nux is trying to keep those punches off his chin. Masood's going to the body. 
Oh, misses with the big right hook. That's going to tire him. Let's that a little bit more. Masood going for the high kick. Catches Max's leg, chops the leg. Max is doing nothing but pushing him away at this point. Both boys don't even have the energy to lift their hands. Oh, inside left kick, outside from Masood. Both are checked. But at this point, the fact that he's busier is probably going to bring him home. And the bell is there. And there you have it, Lucy. That's not a bad first fight. Not a bad first fight. That was a well-matched super heavyweight first fight. I think they um, sort did very well with his leg kicks. He kept kicking. I noticed that uh, Lux didn't kick at all in the third round. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we want the heavyweights to play nice and early right here tonight. And after your first fight, we've got to judge the scorecards. You'll win it by unanimous points. Red corner, the Canadian take. Great win for Masut. He now goes to New South Wales and fights down there at the end of October, fighting the Bob Father. The Bob Father, is that what they say? That's correct. How does he get a nickname like the Bob Father? What exactly does that mean? Fight number two, Stephanie Jane Taylor versus Anas Torfin. Johnny Sheed is ultimate Muay Thai in uh, Melbourne, yes? That's correct. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to bout number two of the evening. is fight proudly brought to you by HTC Roofing. And we fought under modified Thai rules. Knees to the body, no elbows. 54 kilo weight division, three by two minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Mr. Brian Murphy. <laughs> Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Glenn Cook at the ultimate gymnasium. She weighed in at 53.3 kilograms and hails from Helen Vale. She's wearing black tie shorts with white and black writing. Fight record of four fights, one win, one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Jane Taylor. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Mark Pease at Strike Force Gym. She weighed in at 53.6 kilograms and hails from Burley Heads, wearing multi coloured tie shorts. Perfect fight record of one fight for one win. Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Torfi! <laughs> Both fighters the sensory. All right, girls, you both know the rules. All wants a good, clean fight. Listen to my command at all times. Okay, in case of a knockdown, I'll point to the nearest neutral corner. That's the corner you must Looking go to. to all right, fight. defend yourself at all times and good luck. The only one on the card. Mm -hmm. All right, girls, it's touch gloves. Helen Bay. No, 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 that's up here. Glenn Cook is between. That's bad. All right, the girls touch gloves. And the nerve signals them to begin. High tie guard on both girls. Oh, right round kick for Hannah. Good with that high round kick. Stephanie, as per is typical with ultimate, has good hands. They get into the grapple. Stephanie gets dumped. That'll go, that'll go well for Hanif. Good start. Enough, I'm sorry. Oh, tries to, tries to go with the jumping right round. Oh, here come the knees. Here come the knees. Oh, and Stephanie squeezes out a right hand. Finds its mark. That's a very tight grapple. Stephanie's kneeing for dear life. And Hanaf locks her up at the leg before the Murph separates them. Action resumes. A few lumps on Hanaf's head by now. Stephanie's got the high guard. She uses the front leg to bring her in. Closing to apply those hands. Hanaf's trying to get the kicks in. Not as assured with the punches, but she squeezes one out and snaps Stephanie's head back. Up with the right round kick. It might be tight tie in style, but certainly not in pace. It's a very quick first round. Hanaf tends to connect and then shut her eyes. <laughs> oh, misses with the kick. Stephanie punishes her with the hands. 
trying to make up for that dump, but she's not okay, going to get it. Hanuf has got her locked in tight. Murph separates them. She's right, good in the so grapple, Hanuf. If anything, that's where she seems to be at her strongest. Oh, switches up. Oh, lands the right hand on Stephanie's chin. Stephanie's not to be put off. Coming in with the straight punches. Enough turns her back. Stephanie with the right leg. Enough with the right leg. Enough's trying to walk in there and tie her up. Apply those knees. But Stephanie is back and out of danger. Closes with the hands again. Nice knee. Yep, knee to the midsection. Another knee to the midsection from, from Stephanie. Trying, Stephanie trying to pull, bring the head down. And the end of the round. End of the round. I think mean, Stephanie weathered more damage during that round, but I think she probably also scored a little more as well. And us looking a bit more relaxed. There's nothing to relax you like a punch in the face, I always say. Okay, the Murphy strikes with a punch of gloves. And we're away. Enough favouring that right leg and being punished by Stephanie on the way in. Oh, Stephanie with the right hand. Enough seems to be pouring. Her punches seem to come out palm first rather than knuckle first, but now she's got the knees. Now she's applying the knees to Stephanie's midsection. Right, 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 right. Enough is trying to squirm out of that hole, but Stephanie's got her tight. Stephanie coming back in. She likes that. She likes to start off that right leg. Good right hand, but it's not going to do much for her, I'm afraid. Swing the knees into Stephanie's thighs. Stephanie's, right, 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 right. Stephanie's tying her up, but not really working in that grapple. Would you agree, Lucy? She's pushing her into the ropes. Do you think there's any value in it? Well, it just closes... It just closes Hanif down a bit and gets her composed for counter-attack. She's going to need a bit. Oh, good push kick. Drives enough into the corner. Right hand driving enough into the corner. Stephanie's now applying the knees in the grapple. She's used the punches to close the range and now the, now the knees are going in. Oh, enough pushes her away. The girls compose themselves. Stephanie again with that right round kick. Stephanie pushing her into the corner, trying to get those knees in. Leaves, let's go with the push kick. Now she's walking in with the hands. She reminds me a bit of Anthony Vella's zombie walking style with those punch, punch, lock up and then throw the knees. Oh, enough with the right leg. Have we seen her kick off the left? That's my question. Again with that right leg and Stephanie makes the most of it. Landing the punches. The punches, the punches close enough down but they don't seem to slow her very much. Would you agree, Lucy? Yeah, that's right. I just think that it's sort of, um, the other girl, Hannah sort of likes to counter off those punches. That's Let's true. End of round number two. End of round two. I'm still thinking, I think Stephanie's slowly pulling we away from it. I think she's busier, I think she's landing more techniques. Yeah, absolutely. I think Stephanie have been looking at her fight record. She's the most experienced one now of the two. That's now her experience is starting to come in. I think I'd give that to Stephanie. Good round to Stephanie. So, third and final round for the girls. Two minutes to go, all right? They touch gloves. The Mervs gives them, gives them some instructions and a wink. Final round! And they're away. Um, what, what's the bet that right leg's going to come up? And us going to throw a big one. Oh, no. And she walks straight into Stephanie's hands. Stephanie's punching. Lands the knee and the kick. Stephanie's very intent on making those punches work for her. And I think she's succeeding. Oh, finds, finds enough with the jab. Opens up with a fusillade of punches, but it doesn't look like too many of them actually land, unfortunately. Put it in. Enough's not to be daunted. Credit to her, Lucy. She's not going to be put off. She's not giving up. Important thing for a girl with one fight and a win under her belt. I mean, at least a loss will make you hungry. Alright girls, come on, let's go. Our last round. This is it. Girl circled. It's probably the best round we've seen. It's the most thoughtful. They're not flying at each other quite so much like fighting roosters. Now they're looking looking to place their techniques. Stephanie's locked it up enough in an awkward way and tried to bring her onto the canvas if anything has brought herself down. The Murph separates them. Mark Pease is telling this girl to use her push kick. When Stephanie comes in. Come on, Oh, there's the round kick and the right hand. Stephanie pushes her away. Big knee. Big knee. Oh, and the right leg from Stephanie. 
I think Stephanie's well and truly got this one in the bag, Lucy. I think she's, I think she's rested control of the fight. Absolutely. The best enough can do now. Try and stay clear and learn from experience. Oh, big punches, big punches in the last 30 seconds from Stephanie. She's hunting for the knockout. Hanaf is fighting back though. Hanaf has still got her poise. She's throwing that right kick, but still to no avail. Work, work, work. Come on, let's go, huh? Come on, girls, let's go. Go, Both girls seem to have shaken off the tiredness of the second round. Come on now, let's it's go. not something up, you often up, see. And there's the belt. And Hannah puts it back to her point. Hannah looked quite tired in that third round. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of Muay Thai action, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. And all you judges score it. To a unanimous point decision, blue corner, and Stephanie, Stephanie gets the Jane win. Taylor. So that's five wins for Stephanie. Well, I think Hannah should, um, should feel okay about this. She can only be take her a bit of wider for the future. I think that's definitely the case, and it really rams home what Thai Jim have to realise when they're fighting in Western countries that they can't neglect their hands. Ezra Nilon, sorry. Ezra Nylon must be a function of my imagination. Seals the ring in the traditional Thai way. And in he gets. That's true. It's much harder to, to match fighters evenly at a, at a low level of experience. I mean, as we saw with the case of Masood, the guy has had former fights. He's credited as having two now, but he's had four before. Whereas Max, Taekwondo background, but, you know, nothing's going to prepare you, but no head guard and a big punch in the face. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome in about number three of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by the Broad Beach Jewelry Store. It'll be fought under modified tie rules. Knees to the body and head, no elbows. 70 kilo weight division, three by two minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Brian Murphy. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Damien Halliard at the Mirichiwa Muay Thai Centre. He weighed at 70 kilograms, hails from Majimba, wearing red tie shorts, black piping, yellow riding, fight record of three fights for two wins. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom the Tank Engine Davis. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by John Wayne Parr at the Bing Chu Gym, weighed in 70 kilograms, hails from Ashmore, wearing red and black tie shorts with Boo Chu across the front. Perfect fight record, four fights, four wins, one coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Ezra Nilan. <laughs> Fighters to centre ring. Okay, boys, modified tie. Both know the rules. Both been here before. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck. Touch gloves. Right, they touch gloves and away they go. Oh, it's a quick start. Ezra Nylon confident, finding him with the punches. Inside kick. Tom Davis is doing okay. He doesn't look in. He doesn't look. He doesn't look intimidated to me. He comes out, lands a big right round kick. Ezra's taking his gauge. Ezra seems calm. He's blocking. He's kicking. His four fights have stood him in good stead. Tom Davis seems the more nervous of the two, but doesn't look. It does not seem outclassed. Finding his range with his hands. Not really turning his body though. Ezra repels him with a couple of good punches. Oh, catches, Ezra catches, catches Tom with the right round, almost drops him. Tom punches, tries to land the knee to no effect. Ezra shrugs it off. Ezra with the push kick, long push kick off the front leg, counters with his hands.
Ezra off the front leg. Tom with the Tom pumping that double left jab. Ezra counters. It's a little more relaxed than the other two fights we've seen tonight, Lucy. I think that's got a lot to do with Ezra. Ezra wants to take his time. He wants to have a look at Tom, see what he's got. It's the mark of a maturing fighter. Absolutely. Tom lands the inside thigh kick. That's what Tom's got to show. Ezra with the kicks. Oh, Ezra goes to the body. Tom's moving. Tom's moving very well. Oh, Ezra with the big left hook and another left hook. Catches Tom on the nose. Seems to slow him down momentarily. Tom, Tom checks the kick. Ezra kicks up again off the front leg. Ezra, and that's the end of the round. I think, I think Ezra, I think Ezra's showing Tom who's really the more experienced fighter here thus far, Lucy. I'd give that round to Ezra myself. Round two. And Tom straight out of the gate with the punches. Ezra counters with the push kick, trying to find the right hand. Tom's certainly not shy to get in there. And if he does catch Ezra, Ezra will know that he's been punched. Ooh, Ezra with the left leg. Tom working that double jab. Oh, Ezra nice. counters with the right hand. Nice right. And that's why Tom has to, has to make that right hand count. Ezra's starting to hurt him with those hands. He knows he can find him now. And both boys stop, look at each other and separate. Ezra's chin is quite high. If Tom can turn that shoulder and get that right hand home, he might find that chin waiting for him. Ezra with the push kick drives Tom back towards the ropes. He's got that very tight rhythm, especially about his hands, Ezra. Tom's a lot, Tom's a lot quicker. Tom tends to sit and wait for Ezra too much. And then seems disappointed when he gets caught. That's right. If he, if he... Ezra's not really, not really thinking about it, I don't think. It's what we call the relaxation of a more experienced fighter. It's just the ability to throw the techniques and not worry about whether or not they land. That's right. Not focusing on the knockout, focusing on making a contact. Tom needs to be first. Oh, that's a nasty slap of the inside fight. Perilously close to Tom's knee for Ezra. Good result in a broken foot. Again, Tom trying to rush in. Not sure where he's throwing that right hand, though. Is it the body? It's very high if it is. Leaning forward with that right hand rather than turning his body. Ezra's looking for that right hand. Covers up. Come on, boys. Let's go up. Tom's testing the air with those punches. More work. Let's go. Come on. And it seems to me that he shouldn't be surprised. Oh, and there's the bell. Number two. End of round number two. What do you think? Another good round for Israel. What do you think of that last round? Great round for Israel. I think he did very well. I think Ezra is using his experience to make an impression on Tom and he's progressively pulling away from him. I think, short of Tom getting lucky this round, we're going to see Ezra continue to pull away and take it home. And the boys are coming back out for the third and final round. And Ezra, off that front leg, pumping those hands. He's busy now, up with the right leg, in with the left, down low. Tom chases him across the ring, but to no avail. All he's finding is a whole lot of leather. Catches Ezra legs, Ezra's leg, but Ezra brings it back. Oh, and there's that right leg again. Tom catches, tries to retaliate with a big right hand, but does not get it there. Does not get it there. Ezra almost taunting him with that inside left leg kick. Tom opens up, a couple of punches, kick lands. Oh, there's those big hands again. Oh, and Ezra dumps him. Unfounded confidence, unfortunately, there for Tom. Ezra up off that left leg again. Oh, Ezra with the big straight punches and the right round kick. Tom Davis fending him away with the jab, but it's not really working for him. Ezra with the inside left kick again. Tom seems to be bleeding a little from the nose. Big punches, trying to get the knee in there. 
Ezra's right hand is dropping as he hunts with that jab. He's very confident, possibly overconfident, if Tom can twist and reach out with that right hand. Ezra's really teeing off now, occasionally landing that right leg kick. Tom's got a nasty lump forming over that nose. Ezra is calm and composed. Out goes the jab, but the hands are dropping. If Tom can pull out a big head kick or a straight right, he might find he takes the decision. But then again, he might not. Come on, boys, let's go, huh? Oh, switching up from Ezra. I think Ezra's a bit, a bit, a bit more experience, got a nicer technique, cooler. I think that's certainly true. I think if there's one thing Ezra has shown us, it's that four wins are not coincidental where he's concerned. Oh, heavy right round kick, and there's the bell. Both boys shake hands and return to their respective corners. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of modified Muay Thai action from Guardian Data Scorecards, all three judges score for the same way. It's unanimous points, red corner. Unanimous points, red corner. Great fight. Quality work there by Ezra. Ezra Nilon, yes? Not Nylon. Ezra Nylon. Fight number four, Dion McKay versus Anthony F.B. Here we are for the resumption of hostilities at the Beanley Arena. Eruption 8, Clash of the Gold Coast titles. Hopefully we'll see more fights of that quality tonight. So who, who have we got? Who have we got here for the fourth fight? Mate, we've got uh, Anthony F.B. out of Hitman. Uh, oh, well, he looks pumped. He certainly looks the business, that Anthony F.B. I haven't seen a road like that since Saturday Night Fever. Over the ropes of steps, last little blessing. And Dion McCabe's doing a good job of ignoring him, which I think is an important skill for a fighter to cultivate. Oh, well, I mean, at this level, you can't let them get into your head, can you? You know, most of it, they're both fit, young, eager guys to go. And uh, it's the mental power that sort of comes out here this, at this level. And we welcome everybody watching on Fox now. And welcome to bout number four of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by Urban Turf Solutions. It'll be fought under modified tie rules. 68 kilo weight division. Three by two minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Rex Redden. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner. Trained by Damien Hellion at Marucci Muay Thai Center. 68 kilos. And hails from Maruchidor. He is wearing black tie shorts, white piping, and red riding. Fight regular two fights with one win. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to centering Dion McCabe. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Anthony Valor at the Hitman Gym. He weighed in at 67.9 kilograms and hails from Olmo. He's wearing black and blue and white tie shorts with a red riding fight record of two fights for one win. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony F.B. Anthony F.B. Two fights, one win. Both fighters, 67 point, or I should say 67.9. All right, boys, I expect a good, hard, clean fight. Defend yourself at all times. If I say break, break instantly and stop hitting. Okay? Get back to corners, come out fighting. Round one. And Rex Red is centering. The action's underway. They show, they touch gloves. Give up. Anthony FB in the blue and white shorts, Dion McCabe in the black and red. It's a it's a furious affair straight out of the gate. Lots of punches and kicks. Lots of punches and kicks. Anthony's resorted to the, resorted to the big overhand right. The boys enter the grapple. Anthony's caught a leg, and that's good enough for Rex Redden to separate them. And away they go. Will Dion use his reach advantage and reach out with the long jab? He tries, but to no avail. It's a lot of infighting at this point. Both guys going for the inside leg kicks and the circular punches. 
the back foot. He's definitely got him on the back foot. That's absolutely true. It looks like uh, it looks like Anthony's experienced his first win. Wind, I should say. He's waiting for the onset of his second. Almost successfully sweeping Dion there. There's a lot of almost, but not quite in these in, in these uh, fighters of lesser experience. Would you agree, Jason? Yeah, mate. They uh, they're trying to get the technique. They've been taught the technique, but just haven't got it down pat yet. Yeah, I think uh, stress is, stress has a remarkable amount of uh, impact on a person. That's for sure. I mean, those takedowns. You can see that he, he, Ooh, know, he knows solid the takedowns. Body punch. Yeah, as I was saying, he knows that he can take. You do the takedowns, but pulling them off on fight night is different to the gym, obviously. Dion pushes Anthony into the corner. Oh, Catch. catches him with the uppercut. Unle unleashes oh, a furious amount of punches and follows up with the knees to the midsection. He's got to keep that head up. Anthony. Yep. That's good advice. Considering that it's it's closer physiologically to Dion's knees, I think your advice is sound, Jason. Hands up, head up, son. Oh, yeah, catches Dion with the one-two. Dion with the uppercut, oh. tries to find the knee and actually finds himself face down on the canvas. Hey, that was a good sweep, well done. It certainly was, he managed to tie, oh, yeah, right foot four. Good young kid, boys. No doubt we'll be seeing him in there himself. Hey, he's in the wrong right corner. In the future. That's true. And away they go. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Anthony may have stolen that first round on the basis of the sweep. Dion's not to be deterred though, coming back, closing in with the punches. Oh, oh trying to find him in the head. Bridge there, he's got him on there, there's a cut under that right Anthony's eye. Anthony's got left a eye. nasty cut over his left cheekbone. Or I should say his right cheekbone, my apologies for his left cheekbone. Oh, he's in And he follows up with and the big swinging. hooks and Dion is very rattled. He can't put he's him away though and Dion grabs hold. Dion, Dion looks like he's on rubber legs, Jason. He's going to have to find he's those legs if he wants to make the most of that cut, which is a pretty bad cut, I would have thought. Uh, he's got that head dangerously low again. He certainly does. And Dion's got to cover up. Cover up, resort to those straight punches and hope that his vision returns. Bad enough fighting one person. It's even worse when you can see two. He's got that the overhand right that he's thrown over. He's just overextending a little bit and dropping his head a little bit low. But it's working thus far, although Dion is hanging on. He's hanging on to resist that sweep. That's the way. Rexy's had a good look at that cut. He's going to let them go. No doubt to Anthony's relief. Oh. If he can make the most oh. of these big overhands, he's going to take this fight. Dion's showing true tenacity. He is holding on. But that's not going to be enough. He's not enough to survive. You can't go shopping with the same thing. That is true. <laughs> he's got that head oh, low. he's got that head down. He's going yeah. for it. Oh, yeah. He's trying to sink those knees in. And the boys get a bit sloppy and a bit out of hand, and the referee separates them. Back to center ring. They're looking a bit worse for wearing the pair of them. I think that's certainly true. I'm not sure if Dion's luck or Anthony's fatigue is keeping this round going. He's got a cut over both eyes now. He's got sharp knees. Dion. He certainly does. Fighters Touch Club. This is the third and final round. There's nothing like a bit of bloodshed for some people. It seems to work for Anthony FB. Big kick. He's coming in, he's hunting those legs. Oh, oh and he finds up. Dion again with those big overhands. Oh, that's a eight he's count. down for the eight count. Oh, Anthony oh, doesn't know one corner from the other as he sends to the white. Four, oh, is five, he going to beat the counter, is six, he not? Seven, he's standing, eight, but not all the lights are on. He's going to let him go. The lights are definitely not on. He's I think it's only cleaning staff at home for Dion right now. Yeah, that's it. He's got to, I think he's focused. He's going to go finish the job. And Anthony's coming out. All he's got to do is land another one, and it's going to be over. More big punches. He's got to close in on the penthouse there. Dion's recovered, though, to his full credit. He's punching for all he's worth. Oh, oh and the big hook has landed. Anthony's trying to go for the sweep. Anthony's... I mean, full credit, he might not know how to keep his hands up, but that boy has got 100% heart. 
Oh, he's got him with that left hook. Yeah, dropped it for the second time with a massive left hook. And with a bit of luck, that'll be the end of the fight. Great quality, I think, for these guys that had two and, and fights each. I think so. Big heart, that just shows you the, uh, the breeding ground up here in Queensland. I think that's certainly true. Well, that's going to push Anthony's record up to three fight, three wins now out of four fights, and that's a respectable ratio. So he's got some. Uh, he's a tough boy. He got cut in the second. Kept on going. Got cut again in the. I don't know. No, two cuts in the, in the second. Ladies and gentlemen, 54 seconds in the round number three. Your fight was ended by way of knockout. With your winner from the right Hold on, mate. Anthony. He's got a touch of the Apache about him with those two red stripes under his eyes. <laughs> but you've got to give Dion props. There's no lack of heart there. Mate, he tried to come back after that first knockdown and he started throwing those hands and just unfortunately he got caught by that left hook. Well, that's the thing. I mean, being a tall man is hard. It is. You can't step. You can't cut those ankles on those bigger fellas. Fight number five, the Woodman, David Kignoski versus Mark Gilby. We are looking at the Woodman, David Kidinovsky, 11 fights, 7 wins, 1 draw. Hailing from Queensland Muay Thai, Service Paradise, trained by the very capable Brad Hall. It looks like to me he's got a shoot boxing pants on there. Both boys coming in at roughly 60, 62 kilos. Where the heavy, heavy metal has got another workout. It has indeed. Often by the pasty white people I've noticed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to bout number five of the evening. This fight proudly brought to you by fightcalendar.com.au. It'll be fought under modified tie rules. Knees to the head and the body, no elbows. 62 for their weight division, five by two minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Rex Redden. Rex Redden, Firstly, fighting around the blue corner, trained by Brad Moll at Queensland Muay Thai. He weighed out 62.7 kilograms. He hails from the surface paradise and is wearing blue tie shorts with red and white writing. Impressive fight record of 11 fights. Seven wins with one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the Woodman, David Kitanovsky. David Kitanovsky looking relaxed, looking fit. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Jim Shannon at Fighting Cobras. He went at 62 kilograms and hails from Oxley, wearing black tie shorts with a dragon across the front and a red trimming. A very impressive fight record. 13 fights, 12 wins, two coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Gilby. Fight number five of the evening. Okay, boys, I'm going to let this fight flow, okay? Knees to the head, no elbows. When I say break, break. If you hit after I say break, I will take a point off. Let's keep it simple, fight hard. Let's go. Come back to corners. Round one. Okay, who's going to draw first blood? Nice inside licking. They do still look very relaxed. Very tight. What are we looking at? Three twos here? Uh, sorry, three threes? Nah, five twos. Five twos. Longer contest than we've seen so far this evening. Very tight, exploring with those long leg kicks and then retreating to a check position. Mark Gilby likes to punch to the body from the looks of things. We've got David that is switching between stands here. He's here now for left hander. Mark's very capable with that right leg at least. Kicks to the thigh, kicks to the head, kicks to the body. And has the time to wipe his foot on the canvas afterwards. Working, Definitely working. a left hand on David. They've closed into the grapple, applying the knees. Rex Redden separates them. But looks like Mark's got caught on the cup. Good exchange of leg kicks. They're going to hurt in the later rounds. Keeps on digging to the body. Mark Gilby knows he's got a good strong right hand, I'd say. Yeah. Nothing like 12 wins out of 13 contests to, to give you a sense of what you're good at. And 
Kidanovsky sits Gilby onto the canvas, but I think Gilby rattled Kidanovsky shortly, or did rattle him a little while ago. Well, as a help facing the southpaw, you know you need to lead with that right hand. That's true. Straight down the pipeline. Gilby's trying to work himself into a good position in the grapple, but Kidanovsky's dominating it, landing most of the knees, but when they separate, Gilby, Gilby applies the hands. It's a nice exchange there, to Gilby. Well, they've certainly found their stride. The pace has picked up at a quick... The pace has picked up. Yeah, I think the level's picked up too. You can definitely see that. Oh, absolutely. Certainly in the degree of relaxation between the two men. Good round. I'm going to go the way of Gilby. First in of round number one. Super promoter is the Paul Zimacoli at ringside. Fighters, seconds out. Seconds out. The second round is about to begin. I definitely think David has to keep going with those leg kicks. I think you're right. I think we'll see a lot more of Gilby's right hand. Yeah, and hopefully Kidanovsky will not. The only way to slow down his punches is go to the leg kicks. Kidanovsky's keen to come out with the legs early. Gilby retaliates. There's that right hand. And they're tied up. Gilby with the knee. Oh, Gilby, Gilby gets Kidanovsky into the corner. Kidanovsky's keen to fight his way out. And Gilby lets him do it. I just think that uh, Mark Gilby seems a little bit hungry at the moment. I think so. From the look on Kidanovsky's face, he's not exactly sure what to do. Oh, oh Gilby with a beautiful yeah. high kick. And, down. and dumps Kidanovsky to the canvas. Kidanovsky's mouth was very open and we could hear the pop sound as the foot cracked across his jaw. And we hope that wasn't a pop of the jaw. Uh, probably not. She was lucky not to get, not, not to get an eight count out of that. Oh, trying to find David. the dump. Sits him down. He took that shot. He took that head kick well. Kidanovsky trying to land those kicks to keep Gilby at bay, but Gilby does not seem concerned. Work, work, Tie up in the grapple and knee for knee. Turn yeah, well done. Bit of knee to the thigh. Rolling around on the ropes here. Gilby wants to get his distance from Kidanovsky. He wants to land those hands. And as we now know, he can certainly land those kicks. Uh, oh, and Kidanovsky with a right hand of his own. Or should I say left, I'm sorry. Kidanovsky being a southpaw, as you uh, identified earlier, yes? Correct. I think they're both going to need some ice on those shins at the end of this fight. They keep on hacking away at each other's shins. I think that is true. Kidanovsky with the kick. Gilby finds him with the right hand. Puts him to the ropes. Kidanovsky's on his way out of the ropes. Still seems very calm and relaxed. That's in of round number two. Round two has concluded. Maybe a little bit more even. I would have thought that would go the way of Mark Gilby. On October 22, Again? The okay, let's say let's give it to Mark. He's certainly going to get the point for the head kick. It's a beautiful kick, wouldn't you agree? Oh, I think the guy's going to have a sore jaw for a month. With a I think that is certainly the case. Being hit in the mouth when your mouth is open is never a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's just a way to break the jaw. Don't forget, the elite cage fighting in Australia, CMC cage fighting. You're looking at him in the corner now, he's still, still seems very relaxed. Gilby's starting to uh, Gilby's making a very solid fist on him. Yeah, just starting to breathe a little heavy. Gilby's 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 starting to breathe a little heavy. No one saw it coming, particularly kid enough. <laughs> round three! And the Here third round begins. Kidanovsky again with the kicks, trying to find his range. Gilby lets him. Gilby patient, catches, retaliates, finally with the head kick again. Opens up the guard and says, come on son, let's do it. <laughs> That's confidence. It could simply be foolishness. Where time will tell. Uh, oh, Gilby's got him in a headlock. Gu guillotine choke there, it's not shoot boxing, <laughs> although he is wearing the shoot boxing pants. That is true. That is true. Oh. When Kidanovsky uses his own uh, hands, I think he's More out of anger than confidence, oh. he starts to close this, this this fight down. He's really giving Gilby something to think about. 
Oh, there's the right hand. Oh, Bunch misses in the corner, hand. though, I think, because of his own mis mismanagement rather than Gilby's skill. Exactly. He turned himself into the corner there. I hate it when that happens, especially when it's on TV. There's a little cut, uh, oh, boy, cut over the top of uh, Kevin Gilby Lossi's. with that left hand. Whoop, and then an uppercut. The boys are under the ropes. Gilby seems content to hang on and wait that grapple out. Probably a wise decision. It's a wise choice. Uh, they, uh, you know, he wants Rex to break it up clean and no one get caught on the way out. It'll be something silly. Kidanovsky's down. A trip. Gloves are wiped. They're back into it. Gilby is trying to find those hands. I've got a funny feeling that head kick's going to appear soon. The more Kidanovsky's hands start to lag down towards his chest. Uh, oh, there's, the, there's the hook to the jaw. The boys are tied up on the ropes. It's a pretty pretty scrappy Scra <laughs> looking scrappy. grapple at this point. I was going to took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I think uh, I think Kidanovsky's really starting to fatigue. Oh, he hits him with that nice lift. And Gilby's got the grapple on the side. And there's the bell. Conclusion of round number three. I think I'd give that to Gilby too. What about you, Jason? Well, it's a little bit more even round. I think uh, there is a little bit of a cut over the top of Kalkowski's uh, nose there. Um, the corner doesn't seem to be attending to it. Yeah, it, it, may, it may, be, may be more of a scratch. I'm thinking thus far the fight is going the way of Mark Gilby, and I think Jason Lappin's the line to the three. Yeah, I think we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to go the first two to Gilby, and then uh, maybe that one an even round. I still got Gilby ahead by two. Be smart enough and ride the wave home here. I've heard it said that everyone you throw that doesn't hurt them hurts you. I think that's definitely illustrated between Gilby and Kitanowski. Gilby will not throw while Kitanowski is struggling around in that grapple. He's going straight back to those leg kicks. Straight back to those leg kicks. There's some Vaseline shining on that cut over the nose. Well, they did it. Kitanowski. Two kicks to the thigh there. Starting out at a distance, Gilby shoots up to the head. Oh, oh with nice a push, push key to the face. Indeed, which has served to make Kitanowski quite angry. And the nice little smile there. He goes to the guillotine again. The ref separates them and they're back in. Gilby with a big push kick. Oh, turning oh. for the round kick, which Kitanowski rewards him with a thigh kick. That'll score well for him. I think you're right. Falling over, however, not so good. I think the hands are going a bit low on both of them. Both of them are susceptible to a nice head kick now. Or a right hand in the case of Kitanowski from Gilby. Gilby's got him back in the corner now. Trying to go for the dump. Going for the dump in that grapple. It looks like Kitanowski's taking your uh, taking your advice, Jason. He's, he's trying to make this round work for him. If he doesn't uh, win this round, mate, I think that uh, it's guillotine again. They've got to stop that. If I was Rex, I would have given him a warning. It's three times now he's put him in the guillotine. Oh, oh like just missing with that knee. knee. But nice he, get, he gets hand. across. 30 seconds remaining in the fourth round. He eats the cross. The boys are... Two fighters, Gilby's working more actively in the grapple now. Do you think uh, that's because it's later in the fight? I think uh, he's... Yeah, he's starting to come... He knows that this round's it. This is the money round for him. If he doesn't pull it out now, he's going to kiss that last, last round goodbye no matter what he does. There's a lot of tying up in that grapple. They're starting to get tied now. Unfortunately, not a lot of action. That's end of round number four. I'm, uh, you know what? I'm going to go the way Kidanowski. Kidanowski, you think you won that round? I'm going to go, yeah. I think he was certainly busier. Go, boys! Five seconds out. Go. Touch gloves. Take a few steps back. Bunch of touch gloves. Fighters, touch gloves! Let's go, let's go. Touch gloves, boys. Rex really Rizzo summons the fighters Six back to the center ring. The fifth and final round! Oh, and Kidanowski. they're alive. You need to, uh, this is your round, you need to work. It certainly is a piece of ice seems to have made its way out of someone's shorts. Oh, oh nice oh, cut. He'll be snapping that head back. They're into the grapple, the knees are being thrown. Oh, 
Well, Kedanovsky with a, with, a, with a straight punch of his own, kicking into those legs. He drives Gilby into the corner. Those quads are going to be sore in a pair of them. Oh, I think so. Haven't, haven't let him alone all night. From the slapping sound, I'd say their insteps will be too. Gilby really trying to apply those hands. Kedanovsky oh, not nice doing right hand over either. The top. Rebounding back off the ropes. And the referee pulls them out of the corner, separates them. Presumption of hostilities. Good leg kick. Very evenly matched round this. I think Gilby's probably landing more of the punches, but Kitanovsky's coming in through them. He's walking in through them. He's not going to give this fight away. And Gilby catches Kitanovsky on the chin with the straight. They're back in the corner. Bring him out to the center. Let's go again. Kitanovsky in that leg kick. Kidanovsky with the straight punches and the leg kicks. Both boys oh. very tired. Gilby's, right, both, Gilby's making his run. Both boys give them their own now. They're not. And mercifully, they're not ending up in the grapple. Both hands are low. Lots of straight techniques with the low, with the low kicks. Lots of straight punches. Gilby spins Kidanovsky. Kidanovsky comes back. The ref breaks him up again and pulls him to center in. Gilby's good with those straight guys. Hands up, Bell has won. Great fight for the level they're at. They both Gilby. gave it 100%. Can I please have both fighters to set the ring? Here we go for the result. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of Muay Thai action, we've gone to the donor scorecards. All three judges could not split the two fighters. This fight is a draw. A draw. There you go. Coming right. out a draw. Oh, Look, that doesn't necessarily surprise me because, to be honest, I would have thought Kidanovsky. Ladies and you said Gilby. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, Kidanovsky come home with a uh, wet sail, didn't he? Yeah, look, you know what, Jason Lappin? I think you and I are probably smarter than we look. <laughs> Fight number six, Daniel Soldier Jones versus Chris Johnston. Chris Johnson, I saw Chris Johnson fight about a month ago for a amateur world title, full viral, great fight, he's got a New Zealand boy, he's a fighter. Very fit, very serious, very committed looking man. 24 fights, 20 wins and 15 KOs losing at 80. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to about number 6 of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by boomcruisers.com.au. It will be fought under full tie rules. Knees and elbows are allowed. 80 kilogram weight division, 5 by 2 minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Mr. Brian Murphy. Firstly, fighting out of the red corner, trained by John Wayne Parr at the Boon Choo Gym with Adrian Ormrod in his corner. He weighed in at 80 kilograms and hails from Mermaid Waters. He's wearing black tie shorts with camouflage piping. Impressive fight record of 19 fights. 13 wins, 8 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Soldier Jones. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, he's self-trained at the Muay Thai Militia with Bruce McPhee in his corner. He weighed in 80.9 kilograms and hailed from Logan City. He is wearing black and white tie shorts with a pit bull on the front. Impressive fight record of 24 fights, 20 wins, 15 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Johnson. Fighters to century. Okay, boys, you've both been here before. You both know the rules. All wants a good, clean fight. 
liberal, liberal application of the Vaseline. Final instructions. The bird awaits oh, both combatants. Eight touch gloves and later oh, one. Daniel looks very relaxed. Chris Johnson's on the front foot. Big punches straight out of the gate. Daniel retaliates. Landing the kicks, the smart kicks. Checking Johnson's kicks. Daniel Jones looking far more the, the more relaxed of the two. Johnson tries to parry the kick to no effect. Kicks again. Johnson blocks it. Oh! Catches him with a beautiful, almost secret punch. And Johnson is halfway out of the ring already. Johnson's trying to make his way to his feet, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. He's fallen into his corner. The bird has waved off the context. Contest and Daniel Salter Jones has taken the win. What did you think, Lucy? It was it was it was a very sneaky punch. It was hard to see it from here, but it looked like a left hook. Well, that's certainly a very swift conclusion to the uh, sixth fight on the card this evening. Only two more to the main event of Paul Goblin for for the God of Thunder Hoopman and Grant the Bomber. Ladies and gentlemen, 22 seconds into round number one. The fighters at a five way of knockout. Your winner, Daniel Soldier Jones. And Daniel Jones takes the win. It's going to be a, uh, it's a good night for Boot 2 here tonight. Yeah, they've got good support and, they, and um, good success. Great success, so they're doing very well. Fight number seven, Sing Suri versus Mark Matrix Jim Steady. Confidence. Mark brings with him a record of 26 fights for 18 wins. 13 of those wins are coming by way of God out. Considerable dirt and experience for Six Three having three times the fights that Mark matches Jim has had. Yeah, well it's um that's one thing about these Queen, Queenslanders, the tough fighters, they'll fight the ties, Ladies good for them, good for the experience. Win, lose, or draw. about number seven of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by Hot Star Racing. Any fought under full tie rules. 63 kilo weight division, five by three minute rounds with your referee in charge, the Murph, Brian Murphy. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Joe Dimitoli at Team Ultimate at Airport with Anthony the Hitman Vella and Gwen Cook in his corner. He weighed at 63.8 kilograms. Formerly of Thailand, now called Melbourne, Australia home. He is wearing black, blue and gold white tie shorts. He has an impressive fight record of 77 fights. 59 wins, one draw, 25 fights coming. By way of knockout, he was a runner-up in last year's Eruption Super 8. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Sing Saru. <laughs> and his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Peter Kent at the Matrix Gym. Official weight, 63.4 kilograms. He hails from Coomera, right here on the Gold Coast, wearing red tie shorts with punish emblazoned across the front. Fight record, 26 fights, 18 wins, 13 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Matrix Jim Stating. Lucy? 
Okay, Mark Staddy in the red shorts, Sing Sari in the blue with oh, gold nice. trim. Traditional uh, pulling around from Mark Staddy. May, may possibly be interpreted as nerves. He's the first one to strike though. Singh's trying to get a feel for him. And knocks him down with a peculiar looking cartwheel type kick. No count from the referee. But still, he's intent on letting Mark Staddy know who's the boss. Very calm, very composed. Nice Beautiful elbow. Beautiful elbow. Beautiful elbow. No cut. But still, he's certainly showing his pedigree, Singh Sari, early on in this fight. Very relaxed. Marking his range with the jab. Finding Staddy with that cross. Tying him up in the grapple. Staddy's quick to knee. Sari's got a hold of the ropes. The Murph is going to separate them. Singh goes back to centre ring. Very relaxed. Mark Staddy. Coming out. Sing. Quiet, quietly stalking. He's got this interesting kind of jumping, almost as if he's trying to set up a sense of expectation in stadium. Really win that mind game. Psych him out. A series of hard left round kicks. Finding Stady's thigh, pushing him into the ropes. Stady seems to be the one who's slowing down at this point. Singh's punching. Singh very, very effectively yeah, right, ties, right, right, right. Up, ties up Stady's legs, hangs onto the rope, waits for the move to come back and separate them, bring them oh. back to centre ring. Serene knows how, to, knows how to play that drama of dominance. He goes back to centre ring first, he stays calm, and he makes sure that he impresses himself not only on his opponent but on the audiences as well. with the round kick. Strong cross. Ties Stady up. Stady spins him around, puts yeah, him into the corner. Bye. Singh ties up those legs, waits for the move to separate them once again. Oh, nice straight punch to the body from Mark Stady. First effective technique of the, of the round. Overhand punch from Stady foiled by Singh. Singh is unconcerned. Moves out of the grapple, catches Stady as he's coming in with a good straight punch. And another, and enough, and another straight. He's punching now for all his worth. Singh closes up into the grapple. I hate to say it, and it may be premature this early in the fight, but Singh does seem to be distinguishing himself as the far superior technical fighter. It's very good hands for a tie fighter. He certainly is, and he's really, he gives you the impression he's well and truly in his element. And Stady has survived the first round, but I think Singh Sari's really showed us all his boss. Absolutely. Mark Stady. Seconds are being sent out to the ring, the so the boys may come back in. It, it, it's one of the drawbacks of having one really white skin, but, but Stady certainly showing marks of the, uh, the first round. round two. And Sari's away. Stady's very tense, goes with the big hook. Sing Stady to pursue him. He's certainly, certainly picking up his speed now. Knee to the body from Stacey. Yeah. Singh jumps up while on the ropes, ties up Stady with both legs. Rev separates them. Singh's front hand is very low. He comes in with the big head kick. Stady fends it off. Singh's trying to haunt those legs of Stady. Stady's and the big cross again right on Stady's jaw. Sari does have very good hands for a tie. They certainly look strong too. Mm. On the mark. Another, another cross on the mark. Stady's trying to fend his way out of the corner. Sari lets him go. Again, Stady strikes to the body. Seems to step in that jab, but his hands are landing. His timing is certainly very good. His hand skills are unorthodox, but his timing is very good. Big round kick to the body. Keeping that jab in Stady's face. 
Steady kicks to the leg. Singh, high chin, but very relaxed. Again, throwing those hands into steady space. Back to center ring. Back to center ring. Singh is certainly in control of the pace of the fight. Big overhand, big overhand. Singh taunts Steady for it. Steady returns the insult. The crowd lapping it up, but the boys are not. The boys are not going to pick up their rhythm until it suits them. Certainly something of the showman about Singh Sare. Great showman. Crowd love it. Absolutely, and he's got the skill to back it up. Big round kick. Steady wears it on the forearms. Singh fends him off with the leg kick. Steady returns with a push kick. Singh again with what may have been a roundhouse kick and became a push kick. He's looking for that chin. Steady throws the uppercut. Singh throws the round kick, overextends, brings, him back to, brings himself back to stance. Singh jumping knee, tied up in the grapple. Sadie makes the most of it with the knees and sweeps the ring. Sweet. Beautiful. The first significant strike of the, of the fight so far for Stacey. Oh, goes with the elbow. Sari coming back. Stacey's Stacey going to end of that round. One back round. End of round two. Shake hands. Red three. Corners have left the ring and they're away. Singh picking up the pace, straight in with the push kick. Steady circles, catches the kick, retaliates with one of his own. Singh with the high kick and looking to land that cross again. Steady seems to have found his uh, really found his stride after dumping Singh, and it's coming to be a more even contest. Plants a nice right knee kick into Singh's ribs. Right, left down, right, right. Yep, Fighters are separated, they return to center ring. Push kick, and Singh's looking to plant those hands, which he's doing to considerable success. Goes for the high kick to no effect. Singh ties him up, won't let Stady drag him into the corner. Stady's lifting those arms up high in order to make the most of those open ribs. Test the boy with a few good elbows. And another elbow. Singh looks like he may be on wobbly legs. And now Stady's making his run. He's caught him with another punch. Singh's on rubber legs. Stady hits to the body and he drops him to the First eight count of the fight. Singh to the ring. Stady is finding his momentum. Hey, looks like Stady's hit his straps. It certainly does. He's going in for the kill now, and it looks like he may get it. Singh is covering up. Big elbow. Singh's going with the punches. And he's down again. It's, it looked like a slip to me. It's called main count by the murder. This fight is not far from its conclusion. Everyone in Stady's corner saying, throw that straight hand. Throw that straight hand. Straight to the bread, bread basket. Indeed, which he's going to do, up with the hook. Singh is definitely caught in, the caught in the storm. He's dancing around the ring the best he can, but it looks like this fight is well and truly on the way to conclusion. Stady slips, but he's back. Catches Singh, Singh with the left. Singh is hanging on for dear life. And the fight has been called off. 
well. Stady right has into the fight. Stady has every reason to be very, very pleased with that performance. But I have to say, I think he lost. I think he lost the first two rounds. Exactly. He, he actually fought like a tie. He took his time. Focus. He had his straps at the right time in the third round and gave it his all, which uh, paid off for him. Two minutes and ten seconds in the round number three. Your referee stopped the fight with your winner from tip by TKO, Mark Matrix Jim Staney. Semi-main event, Yun Ruai versus Benaya Duma. Twenty two wins, five draws, six KO. <laughs> Having said that, take this back to Roger Yad for a while for a second. He's had fifty five to thirty five wins, and twenty of those come by way of KO. He is a serious man. Yeah, poor poor Manigan Tins has good fighters from Mad Extreme. Certainly does. Chief among those is own son Eli. Also, the very exciting and lovely fella, Taylor Harvey. Oh, he's Taylor Harvey's friend. Fantastic. He's a great up-and-coming fighter. He certainly is. I heard is. he's, um, yeah, very good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And we welcome everybody on Foxtel. And we welcome you to the semi-main event of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by Santino's on the Gold Coast. It'll be fought at the full tie rules. 63 kilo weight division. Five by three minute rounds. Your referee in charge, Mr. Brian Murphy. Firstly to my left in the blue corner, he's self-trained with Jason Lappin, Nugget and Zava Askarov in his corner. Official weight, 63 kilograms. He hails from Phuket in Thailand. He's wearing light blue shorts with yellow and a red trim with a fight record of 50 fights, 35 wins, 20 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Yun Rawai. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Paul Madigan from the Maddox Gym. Official weight, 62.5 kilograms. He hails from Noosa. Wearing black tie shorts with punish across the front. Fight record of 47 fights. 22 wins. 5 draws. 6 coming by way of knockout. Gold Coast Beanley Arena. Welcome to center ring. Banaya Duma. Okay guys, <coughs> you both know the rules. All at once a good clean fight. Let's go. Touch gloves. Proudly sponsored by Santino's on the Gold Coast. And Yad Rawai done with his right. uh, traditional ceremony in all business. And the fight begins. A slow start from Yad, as we would expect. Benaya with the jab. Rawai counters with the inside kick. High kick from Duma. From Duma. Duma in the black shorts. Yard's well and truly engaged in the process of feeling out here. And he's making a good fist of it. Very fluid fighter. Duma wants to get in there and get it on. Quality counters and Rawai has got a hold of Duma. Beautiful. Beautiful control. 
counters and counters and Duma's ill-fated straight punch with a big kick catches him with the left hook on the ear. So far, Yada is in control. Duma finds his, finds his mark with the round kicks. Yada ties Duma up, goes for the dump, can't manage it. Right, right, right. A few quick knees and, and the Murph separates them. The wise right eye seems to be bothering him. Well, he's got something in it. Well, he's fighting a much taller opponent than what he did from last night. With uh, Conto being the sign, Hyderson. Duma catches Rawai on the ear. They smile, shake hands and continue. Very civilised, very civilised man this young Rawai. Couple of hooks, retaliates with the high kick. Duma's trying to find the leg kicks, but Rawai foils them. Leans him with the hands. Rawai successfully leans away. Not always the best thing to do when you're the shorter man. Lashing out with those smart round kicks. Oh, and gets the dump. Duma goes down on his back. I haven't seen a fight of this civilised since I last watched the tennis. <laughs> The other was making a very solid fist oh, of Nice push kick back. It was a nice push kick. And a badly timed catch by Rawai as much as anything else, which he acknowledged with a wink to, wink to Nugget in his corner. A very good first round, I would have said, Lucy. I felt that uh, Rawai was well and truly in control, but Duma is not entirely out of the context. Yeah, I think um, the knife's coming, you know, coming, getting stronger. You know, I'd say you're watching the third round to see the guy come back. I think he's going to be a stronger fighter. I think the second round was the knife. I think so too. I think, I think Rawai certainly stamped his... Uh, he controlled the rhythm, he controlled the tempo, I think he's in control of the fight thus far in the early stage. Round two! And Benaya with the double right round kick. Yad counters with one of his own. For the straight jab, can't find it. Rawai cuts in, brings in the clinch, and starts with the knees. He's looking for that dump. Doom is resisting him. Yad seems to be happy to settle for the knees. They're working in the clinch, but the Murph separates them. Rawai's right eye is still bothering him. Up with the right round kick, finds its mark on Benaya's ribs. Trying to land that jab. He's trying, to, he's trying to set his range with that jab, but he just doesn't seem to be able to catch right with those straight punches. Yad Rawai with the snappy left hook to the right round. Up comes the left and the counter to the leg from Duma. Successful counter. Successful counter from Rawai. The pace is certainly picking up, but the quality is maintained. It's, it's like watching the first round, but a little bit quicker. I haven't seen any elbows thrown. It must be a mod tie fight. I think he's a full tie. I think uh, Rawai had a cracker very early on. Okay. Oh, Duma gets the right hand onto the front, onto, uh, and they close into the grapple. Might be right, Lucy. Maybe he just know it almost. Knee for knee. Rawai gets the sweep. Trying to get those straight techniques in, but not really succeeding. Yeah. Rawai is a very, very strong man. He's using that lower center of gravity to his advantage very, very well to dump Duma whenever he can. Will do the jab. Yes, he does. Straight punches. Rawai closes the distance, brings him into the grapple. Let's go with the knees. Dumps him again. He's 
very strong inside with that. Um, the dumping looks ugly. Technique. The dumping looks ugly, but the way it saps a fighter's fitness can't be underestimated. The value of being dropped on your back. So that's the fact that it is the highest scoring technique. That's in right. Tri-box. It takes the focus off the, you know, uh, off the fighter that's been dumped. Absolutely. You know? But Doom is, Doom is resolute, you know, he's a very experienced fighter, he's had what, 40 odd fights, 47 fights, he, he's, he's still in there, and that's the way it should be. Jab for push kick, the wide with the round kick, into the grapple, the wide's pumping in the knees, trying to bring Doom down to do some Right, Duma, right, Duma right. knows well enough to keep his chest against for a while. Not let that gap increase enough that he's going to get neat on the chin. And that's Thank an you, experienced fighter. At the end of the second round, Lucy, I'm thinking that it's for a while. Round three. Boys shake hands and out they come. Yadrawai is blinking more with that right eye. High left kick. Duma closes him with the hands. His chin's very high, and there was a hook whistled past him. Good counter of his own, though. So Duma catches him with the inside. Rawai retaliates with a kick off the same leg. Rawai is mighty strong in that grapple. He's making the most of it, and he successfully dumps Doomer again. Helps him to his feet. Great display of respect. That's one thing that the that's one thing that the ties really bring to the sport. They bring a grounding of that traditional respect for your opponents to it, which is something that's I think sorely missing from a code like the UFC. Closing that distance and it's starting to look like he's not exactly sure what to do with it. He's ended up back in the grapple, Rawai's in the corner. Alright, break, break, break. He's successfully locked up Duma's legs. The referee separates them. Duma's closing in. Rawai thinks the better of that left leg but throws it anyway. Duma dances out. I think Doom is looking fit now, and I think Rawai is starting to look worse for wear. Maybe we're seeing the toll of last night's fight on Rawai. What do you think, yeah. Lucy? Great, mate. Well, I think he's doing pretty well. Um, yup. Considering he fought last night. Oh, he's doing brilliant. Yeah, he's sort of playing with the guy. Playing with the night. Yeah, right over the commentary stand as we speak. We can see the sweat right, right, mate. Rawai constantly turns back to centre ring, constantly turns back to centre ring. He knows that's what they're fighting for, and that's where he brings it. Oh, some heavy knees from both boys at this point, locked up in the clinch. Rawai goes down low to try and go for the dump. Can't manage it. Verf separates. Back to centre ring. Out comes the push, pick, push kick from Rawai. Up with the left round. He's looking tired at this point. But he's certainly doing oh, it. Straight. Duma snapped his head back with a beautiful straight punch. But Rawai's not having any of it. He's retaliated with a solid kick. Very solid straight punch there from Benaya Duma. Rawai certainly doesn't look rattled. End of the third. End Let's of the third. round number three. Rawai doesn't look rounds. rattled, but that's got to that's got to lift Benaya's confidence. And the fourth round. Round four. Now folks, we're behind. Very friendly chap, and they're away. Just need to watch the pace of this pace of this fourth round. This is where it's going to get real quick. Benaya lands a good right hand. Yud goes upstairs from the body, catches Benaya on the chin. Again, again, both boys come together and the sweat flies, but it doesn't look like either punch actually found its mark. Benaya with the round kick. 
Judd's really applying the hands now. Lots of straights, plenty of hooks. He nice likes two straights to the body and a hook to the head. Punch to the body, straight punch to the body. There you go, those two straights and then the hook. Nia ties him up. Judd gets his hands in there to prevent the knees. Frustrates the grab. You can see they want to throw elbows. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's very intent on that straight right left hook combination. Yeah, break, break, break. It's looking good at the start of the round, but it seems yep. less oh. effective at this point. Yeah, it's got a hold, dumps him again. Almost gives him the big right round Let's kick go. to the kisser on, on the way to the canvas. Boy, shake hands. Yad, long push kick. Benaya catches it, but Yad manages to recover his leg. Oh, beautiful. Straight right after catching the, catching the push kick. Beautiful. Beautifully timed. Benaya shakes it off, though. He's a tough man. He's a, he's a tough competitor. Yad faints. Push kicks him into the corner. Yad's, Yad's stamping his authority on this fourth round. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, good hand hands. skills. We thought Singh had good hand skills for a yeah. time. Very good hands. Hands. Absolutely well. beautiful push kick to the body there from Yad. Faints with the leg, comes back with the hands. Beautiful head movement. He's now he's now landing that left hook with greater success. Come on now, let's go up. Up, low, low, low. Trying to keep Benaya at bay with those push kicks. Comes with the overhand right. Benaya's wise up by the second one. Locking up into the grapple, and I let's go. Yeah, yeah. Only 30 seconds remaining in this fourth Guts round. Come on, Brandy Arena. Back to centre ring. It's a big shiner under uh, Benaya's right eye. Benaya closes in, tries to work the hands. Yeah, ties him up in the grapple again. Guts very composed. Dumps him again. Dumps the no, iron again, I should say. Up, right. Very composed. That's the end of the fourth round, ladies and gentlemen. End of the fourth round, round I, think, I think. I think you have to take a minute as well myself. Yeah, very good round for you. Touch gloves. Bye, boys. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fifth, fifth and final round. And, and final round. round. Oh, right. Yad moves around. Push kick. Duma close in with what looks suspiciously like an elbow to me. Sweat flies over the country box. Lucy too, he gets a shower. Pretty quiet fifth round so far. Yad tries to get that left leg up but does not succeed. Duma pushes through with the hands. Yad evades pretty easily. Trying to get that kick up. Yad punches to the body. Oh, catches Duma with that left hook that he seems to be promising to catch him with over the successive rounds. Preceding rounds, I should say. And dumps Duma to the canvas. Oh, a very astute hook there. Come on, boys. Huh? Let's go, huh? Push kick from Yad. Oh, beautiful, beautiful catch of the front leg and then feeds him the right hand. <laughs> Duma did not swallow, however. Yard waiting on the ropes. Duma's trying to make his way in. Right, 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 right. Tying him up in the grapple. A little more active, but still working to tie Duma up. Back to centre ring. Excellent move. If anything, I think that the, the, the ticket for Duma at this point is to pour everything into it and lift the tempo. It really feels to me like they're working at Yad's tempo. Yeah. Oh, right, fourth last mate. night, the man is tired. The way to close the gap at this point is to outwork him. Out comes the push kick. Oh, oh nice oh, counter. Beautiful Hands. counter. Yad's great with countering that long push kick with the, with, with the straight right, right mate, hand, mate, isn't mate. he? Very good. It, it's beautiful. I've never seen it done. Quite. I've never seen it done before. 
especially not as a staple technique. Guards resting on those ropes. Gets the knee up to the body. Locks Duma up. Break, break. Come on, boys. Let's right. go. I'll work it Move out. Separate. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 seconds running in this final round. Bring this fight home. Bring the leader. 40 seconds running. Duma almost, running 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 those hands. Hands. almost yeah, gets dumped. Go, makes go, his way into the ropes. Yad fends him off with a push kick. Duma slow to pursue. Yad takes advantage with the straight punch. Locks him up in the grapple. Dumps him yet again. Well and truly stamping his name on the contest. Straight, straight, yet yeah, ineffectual punches from Duma. Quality invasion from Yard. Tries to get the knee up there. Yard's got the punches. Backs away. Even turning his back on Duma. Showing how little concern he has at this late stage in the game. Duma gets the knees up. Right, 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 right. Yard's just holding him there. And the bell has sounded. Let's get another fight. Five, five rounds. Right. You right. provide, but I'm Duma. We await the turn to scorecards. Before we go to the judges' scorecards, ladies and gentlemen, give both fighters a big round of applause. You Yugrawai, Benaya Duma. Round of applause, I would have to say. After five rounds of full-time rules action, we've got the judges' scorecards. All judges score the fight unanimous. Your winner, Blue Corner, you. I think Brian Murphy shared our opinion. Once the uh, fight was announced as being unanimous, he was already lifting Yad's hand for, uh, before it had been called. Yeah. Well deserved win by Yod. I think so. Yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. Main event of the evening: Grant Bubba Millwood versus Thor, God of Thunder, Hoopman. Fighting out of the blue corner, Grant Bubba. Millwood! Grant the Bomber Millwood. We're looking at a man with 30 fights for 25 wins and 17 of them coming by way of Muff Out. He put Charles August to sleep quite recently in the second round. He trains out of the urban fight gym with Richard Walsh. He is sparring with Nathan Carnage Corbin and tonight he takes on four who from the red corner, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Walsh standing on the ring apron. All business. Here comes Thor Hooper. Made, made his mark on the international stage. The big Paul Slowinski this year in what is probably the fight of the year. Strength to strength, the only thing holding this man back is size, and even that's even that's a matter of conjecture. Thor Hooper, 33 fights for 25 wins, with 16 of those coming by way of KO. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Prophecy Promotions, eruption number eight, clash of the Gold Coast Titans. Would like to welcome you to the main event of the evening. This fight is proudly brought to you by the Suvlaki Hut. It'll be fought under full tie rules. 86 kilo weight division, five by three minute rounds. Your judges are ringside. Alan Bell, Wayne Mead, and Mr. C. Your ringside physician, Dr. Jez. Your timekeeper, Joshua Demacoli. And your referee in charge, when the bell tolls, Mr. Brian Murphy. Beanley Arena. Are you ready? Lucy, it's all I can do to keep myself from screaming in the arena. Microphone. Are you ready? It's going to be a great, great, great fight. Great fight. The time is here. I certainly hope so. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is Without wanting to sound First too sadistic, we want to see this too. Out of the blue corner, trained by Richard Walsh at the Urban Fight Gym. Official weight, 86.2 kilograms. Wearing black tie shorts with punish emblazoned across the front. Fight record, 30 fights, 25 wins, 17 coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Centering, Grant Barber.
and his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by John Wayne Park, the Boon Chu Jin, with Adrian Ormrod in his corner, official eight, 85.9 kilograms. He hails from right here in Queensland, Australia, wearing black tie shorts with Boon Chu across the front. Fight record, 33 fights, 25 wins, 16 of those coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Thor, God of Thunder, Hoofman! Fighters to center ring. All right, boys, you've both been here before, you both know the rules. All I want is a good, clean fight and obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out fighting. Both men looking Scheduled very five serious when they receive the reference for instructions. Boon corner taking their time and moving to Hong Kong. Moving the rope. Bill Wood is ready to go. Bill Wood just wants to get it on. Doesn't like that way to set around one. Oh, very tough. Millwood, big rip to the body. Gore up with the high kick. Millwood's hunting with that right hand. Looks like he's hoping for an early night. Big right hand, big right round kick to the head. Powerful left jab there from Millwood. Finds Gore with the right hand. Gore's backing up. Thor's trying to take this slowly. Millwood's trying to take advantage of the fact that Thor's slow to start. Lift elbow by Thor. He's trying to take advantage of the fact that Bomber is leaping forward on that jab. Hopefully going to leap into that elbow. Bomber is certainly aptly named. They are big punches and big kicks. Thor retaliates. Low thigh kick. Stepping in with that jab. Bomber like, certainly knows what he's good at. Likes going forward, Bomber. Certainly does. Which is pretty oh, standard boy, for the up. urban fight, Jim. Carnage is a big fan of the uh, full speed straight ahead strategy too. And it works. It certainly works for him. Yes. Nice defense on the elbow from Thor. Absolutely. A number of big punches, Thor. Yes. He's done a good job of shaking them off, but I think you can see that they've taken their toll. He's breathing very heavily for someone that's done as little work as he has thus far. Bill Wood is definitely trying to stamp his authority on Thor at the outset. Two and three, says Richard Walsh in the corner. Millwood deviates from the plan, looking for the right uppercut, but his foil finds the right hook, but it's not powerful enough to introduce Thor to the canvas. Millwood seems very tense, but he's certainly applying the pressure. Looks like a slight cut over Millwood's right eye. Thor lands the leg kick. Bomber looking for the right hand, not finding it. Thor's cap trying to come back with that leg kick. Not finding that either. Very busy first round. Grant leans forward. Comes over with the right elbow. Thor leads him with an elbow of his own. Thor finds Miller with a straight jab. Thor is really working those hands as hard as he possibly can. And it looks to me like now that Thor's weathered the storm, he's starting to find his routine. He's starting to find his routine. Over with the big right hook. Again, Thor finding that lead leg with the round kick. Going for the sweep. Millwood comes back with the heavy jab. He's jumping forward on that jab, putting all his weight into Let's get a round, round number one. Our oh, main event here in rush number eight. Thor, God of Thunder Hoopman, Grant. Well, I'd say there was Bob a great round to that. Thor certainly looks like he's had a hard first oh, round. Round, round two. Eight, touch gloves. And Millwood's back in, looking to catch that leg and retaliate with a big right hand. Millwood stuffs his left into Thor's bush, but Thor gets, but Thor gets back at the kick. He's a bit clumsy looking, Grant Millwood. Yes, yes. Very that. powerful lot. Very powerful. 
Noah trying to link through that guard at the elbow. Noah tries with one of his own, falls into the corner. Skillfully deflected by Thor. Thor comes back with the jab. Millwood, big right rip to the body. Catches Thor with the jab as Thor tries to come in with the elbow. Millwood certainly does not lack on the aggression state. Big right rip to the body. Thor certainly showing the effects on his rib cage. He's marked up already. Again with the elbow, but Millwood's having none of it. Millwood with the right round kick, finding that rib cage. Thor countering with the big right round kick to the leg, and again, a bit low, across the calf slash shin. Millwood lines Thor up again for those big hands, and lands the big right hook, looking for the knee. They're tied up in the grapple. Murph separates them, and they continue. Millwood is bleeding from the nose. Some of that blood's made its way onto Thor's chest. Actually, it looks to me like Millwood's got a substantial cut in his forehead. Up in the hairline, it's now starting to bleed down his face. Thor's looking to land that right elbow. It's like a razor. Big right rip to the body. Trying to get that knee in. Thor gets right, in with the right uppercut. It was very elegant, very nicely placed. Bill was really bleeding a streak down the middle of his face right now. Thor's leaping him with the elbow. It's a very significant cut. He's got two. He's got one in his forehead and one in his hairline. And both are bleeding furiously. Thor's up at the left leg. Millwood throws the right. Thor's starting to settle. He's landed a third elbow. We can't see because he's got his back to it. But it looks huge. As a matter of fact, it is. And the blood is starting to pour out of Millwood now. It's gone up in a huge spume in front of his face. He's out. Seconds 45 round. seconds to the end of the round, and they can start blocking these cuts up so Millwood can go back to doing what he does best, which is throwing those massive bombs. But Thor is not going to let him. He's working those cuts. He's firing those elbows in as hard as he can. He's trying to slot him into the space between Millwood's mitts. Millwood is slowing down. And we Let's have the belt. round number two. What a super round. Well, there's a lot Look of blood for Hoopman. And he number eight. After a furious first round from Grant Millwood, where he really stamps the authority on Thor, Thor's managed to slot a lot of straight elbows in between the space in Millwood's mitts and cut him at least three times. There's a lot of blood. Whether it's going to go to decision, we can only wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want some inspiration, short two rounds. Ah, uh, and the referee has called it off. Too much blood, and that is that. Great night of fights. Look, my only complaint about that fight is that it was so short. By oh, God, it was a furious start. A furious start. Second, end of the second. It seemed like a very short break, but obviously they couldn't stop the bleeding and the doctors were not satisfied. They don't think that Urban fights are going to be satisfied either. I'd like to see those two fighters uh, under K1 rules. I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a better contest. Thor's really got a, got a great set of elbows on him. This um, <laughs> the bottom of Millwood looked a bit awkward in there, didn't Ladies and gentlemen, sing around. It looked a bit awkward in there with the elbows, so... Yeah, looks like Thor's elbows are actually cut. Yeah. Looks like Thor's actually cut his own elbow. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight will stop due to the cut on Grant's eye going, on his head going into the eye. So it was a very dangerous cut. Your referee stopped the fight. So your winner, by Team AO Thor! Thunder! Who? Man! And Thor 
Usman has taken it home. It's a short but very exciting final fight here at the Bentley Arena tonight on, guys, on interruption right. number eight. Hopefully, Bird, mate. You are first round, you were blazing. The Thor's elbows, mate, they were all seen those elbows, but they just started cutting every time I hit you. So, uh, unfortunately, mate, in the fight, but you're doing it soon until that moment, mate. Yeah, exactly what you said. I was doing good, I thought, and then I uh, just cut me with the elbows, and I'm going to do about it. It's going to my eyes, so Brian stopped it, you know. So, I thank everyone for coming out and supporting me. Uh, uh, thanks for taking the fight and all the rest of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Bomber Millwood, please give it up for Grant Bomber Millwood. Go with a great shot here in centering. Four. Your record just gets more and more impressive every fight, mate. You've uh, taken fights at much bigger weights than you, and uh, today you come down to a weight, you probably be uncomfortable for yourself there, but mate, that second round, those elbows were absolutely vicious. I don't see that left elbow of yours, mate. Everything in, it cut him. Yeah, I mean, I knew Bob was going to come to fight, and he came out hard, so that was the plan when he came in to just give him the elbows and pay it off. Sorry he didn't get to see a longer fight. I know everyone would have. I'd like to see us more for the five rounds, but... Yeah. I'm sure nobody's going home upset, but it was a great main event. And ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Thor, God of Thunder Hootman. Once again, victorious in Centurion. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very, very much for coming here to the Beanley Arena. Today is Saturday, the 25th of September. On behalf of Paul Demacoli and all that Prophecy Promotions, my name is John Demacoli, and it was great being at MC this evening. Have a great night. Enjoy the NRL Grand Final next week. And ladies and gentlemen, till next time, keep punching, and we'll see you back at the Beanley Arena.